So what is the difference between an EGC and a GEC? Well, an EGC is our abbreviation for Equipment Grounding Conductor, and GEC is our abbreviation for Grounding Electrode Conductor. Notice both of them include the word grounding and the word conductor. Let's first look at Grounding Electrode Conductor. See this green wire right here? That is a Grounding Electrode Conductor, or GEC. And this is Exhibit 250.31 from the 2020 NEC Handbook. And it says Exhibit 250.31 shows a listed water pipe ground clamp. That's right here, the ground clamp, generally used with 8 AWG through 4 AWG grounding electrode conductors, GECs. So there you go. That's a simple example of a GEC. And here we have another example of grounding electrode conductors. This is exhibit 250.26 from the NEC handbook. And you see, these are wires going to these ground rods. And this depiction shows different ways to put in ground rods. You can put it straight down. That's the most common. You can put them at an angle, or you can dig a trench two and a half feet deep. And I have a story about this. I uh, installed a panel one time, and I could not get my ground rod to go straight down. So I dug a ditch. It's like a ditch. You call it a trench, I guess. Two and a half feet deep. And I put my ground rod down there, or you call them electrodes, actually. This is an electrode. And I hooked up my grounding electrode conductor to my electrode ground rod. And I filled it back in, called the inspector for an inspection. And he looked at it. He says, that's nice. Dig it back up. I want to measure it. What I did is I negotiated with the inspector. I said, well, what if I just dig in the middle here and you see this two and a half feet deep? and then maybe you can pass it. He said, okay. So I dug it down two and a half feet, not the whole trench again, but some of it. And he, he measured it and he, he liked it. But this is a grounding electroconductor. So there's another example of grounding electroconductor. It says here, installation requirements for rod and pipe electrodes. So this is a good example of an electrode. See right here grounding electrode conductors. And here's another example. This is grounding electrode conductor. See, it points right here. And this is a depiction from exhibit 250.22 in the handbook. In this depiction, it says uh, a grounding electrode system comprised of the metal frame of a building, a ground ring, a concrete encased electrode, a metal underground water pipe, and a ground rod. And this shows that you can have more than one type of grounding electrode. Terminating the GEC is covered in 250.24A1. And this gives you a good idea of how you would terminate your GEC. Now let's move to equipment grounding conductors, that is EGCs. So here's a definition of EGC that's found in Article 100 of the NEC, Grounding Conductor, comma, Equipment. That's Equipment Grounding Conductor. A conductive path or paths that is part of an effective ground fault current path and connects normally non-current carrying metal parts of equipment together and to the system grounded conductor. Now that would be your service neutral conductor to the system grounded conductor or to the grounding electrode conductor or both. Informational note number one, it is recognized that the equipment grounding conductor also performs bonding. And informational note number two, see 250.118 for a list of acceptable equipment grounding conductors. Here is 250.118 
types of equipment grounding conductors. They're going to list 14 different types of equipment grounding conductors. The equipment grounding conductor run with or enclosing the circuit conductors shall be one or more or a combination of the following. One, a copper aluminum or copper clad aluminum conductor. This conductor shall be solid or stranded, insulated, covered or bare, and in the form of a wire or a bus bar of any shape. Two, rigid metal conduit. Three, intermediate metal conduit. Four, electrical metallic tubing, that's EMT. Five, listed flexible metal conduit, meeting all of the various falling conditions. What I'm trying to get at here is that there's a, a lot of different types of equipment grounding conductors, and that includes EMT, and it includes flexible metal conduit. The conduit must be terminated in listed fittings, of course. So now let me give you some examples of EGCs. This green line right here is an equipment grounding conductor, and notice it starts from a bus bar, and goes to the load and this is exhibit 250.46 in the handbook it says grounding and bonding arrangement for grounded systems illustrating connection of the EGC on the bus right here to the enclosures and the grounded service conductor and here we have a drawing that says any one of the following types can be used as an equipment grounding conductor and we have pictures of conductors that can be solid, stranded, bare, or insulated. So we got a green ground wire and a bare ground wire and a bus bar. And uh, on the left, we have PVC, which, of course, you'd have to have an EGC wire in it. And RMC, IMC, EMT, which we went over a little bit earlier. Uh, flexible metal conduit, that's limited. So EGCs can come in many forms. So now if you hear someone talk about EGCs or GECs or you're reading and you read about EGCs or GECs, now you're going to know something about it. And hopefully you're going to know where to look. These various articles that I've shown you are a good place to start. And I hope that this video was helpful.